Hello everyone and welcome to part one of HHD Unit 3 Area of Study 1, Understanding Health and Wellbeing. The focus of this video will be dot points 1, 2 and 3. Concepts of health and wellbeing including physical, social, emotional, mental and spiritual dimensions and illness and the dynamic and subjective nature of these concepts, benefits of optimal health and well-being and its importance as a resource individually, nationally and globally, and the prerequisites for health as determined by the WHO, including peace, shelter, education, food, income, a stable ecosystem, sustainable resources, social justice and equity. Concepts of health and well-being. I would suggest memorising these four definitions. It'll just make it easier. If you get a define, you won't be losing easy marks. And they will also add substance to those higher order thinking questions. So health. A complete state of physical, social and mental well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Well-being, a complex combination of all dimensions of health characterised by an equilibrium in which the individual feels happy, healthy, capable and engaged. Disease, a physical or mental disturbance involving symptoms, dysfunction or tissue damage. Illness, the state of feeling unwell a more subjective concept related to personal experience of disease. The dimensions of health and well-being. Physical health and well-being refers to the functioning of the body and its systems, the ability to perform daily tasks and activities, having a strong immune system, healthy body weight and adequate energy levels. Mental health and well-being refers to the current state of well-being of a person's mind or brain and their ability to think and process information. It includes having positive self-esteem and low levels of stress and anxiety. Emotional health and well-being refers to the ability to express feelings in a positive way as well as displaying resilience. It includes managing emotions effectively. Spiritual health and well-being refers to values, beliefs and ethics that arise in the mind and conscience of human beings. It is described as the need for finding meaning and purpose. It includes a positive sense of purpose in life and belonging. Social health and well-being refers to the ability to form meaningful and satisfying relationships with others and the ability to adapt to different social situations. It includes having a supportive network of friends and being able to communicate effectively. Characteristics of health and well-being. Interrelationship. This refers to all of the dimensions of health and well-being affecting each other. For example, if someone breaks their leg, they may not be able to attend school and therefore will be prevented from developing satisfying and meaningful relationships with their peers. Subjective, health and well-being means different things to different people dependent on their own circumstances and situation. For example, Ted and Sylvia both have the flu. Ted has had the flu before, so it's not a hindrance on his everyday life. He feels well and is able to attend work after taking some medication. Sylvia on the other hand, has never had the flu before and it affects her quite severely. Thus, she needs to take a week off work in order to recover. Dynamic, health and well-being is constantly changing in relation to our own experiences and interactions. It can change rapidly, for example, the death of a loved one, or at a slower rate, for example, the constant consumption of unhealthy foods will cause a change in health status. Benefits of health as a resource. Individually, 
children can feel well enough to go to school where they receive an education and improve their literacy skills. Adults can feel well enough to work and earn a stable income. Parents who are well enough to work will have money to feed their children, thus preventing malnutrition. And people are able to do the things they enjoy, for example, going to the gym. Nationally, the country can grow economically. More people working means more taxpayers. The money taxed can be used to develop better healthcare systems to further improve health and enable universal health coverage. An increase in income for the country allows the country to compete with others. Globally, the morbidity and mortality rates will reduce, meaning that countries will be able to focus on other issues such as working collaboratively to address climate change. Governments in each country can develop their healthcare systems, reducing the number of communicable diseases and therefore reducing the risk of global disease outbreaks. With many countries moving into the high income category, which we will look at in Unit 4, they can join forces to eradicate poverty in low income countries. The WHO prerequisites for health. Peace refers to the absence of conflict a cohesive society in which people are not injured and can work, attend school and spend time with family. Food refers to having a reliable food supply, the prevention of malnutrition, strengthens immune systems to fight off pathogens. Sustainable resources refers to current resources used for good health and well-being being available for future generations to meet their needs. Shelter, protection, a safe place for people to spend their time and pursue activities such as studying. Income enables the purchase of resources such as food, healthcare, education and shelter. Social justice refers to equal rights and responsibilities for all regardless of sex, class, income or ethnicity. Education allows people to earn an income have a higher socioeconomic status. It also provides health literacy skills so people are able to understand health promoting messages. A stable ecosystem consists of all living and non-living components. It means living things are having their needs met without causing detrimental effects on the natural environment. Equity refers to fairness and is about providing every person with the resources they need to lead healthy lives. Now it's important that you don't confuse equity with equality. That concludes this video. I hope your knowledge on dot points one, two and three from unit three area of study one have been consolidated. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me or leave them in the comments below. Thank you.